Thanks for watching another video from Go Engineer. My name is Bruce Schaller, and this video is going to be on using SolidWorks' shortcuts to go as quick as you can go by eliminating mouse picks in a lot of mouse travel from the left to the right of the screen. So in order to do this, we're really going to have to utilize uh, the shortcut key. It's really the most important uh, function and modifying the shortcut key to have the best uh, commands in it. Along with making use of the quick pop-ups, the instant 3D, the left mouse button and the right mouse button, and the gestures. Really, the command manager is uh, simple to uh, go in and show you how to modify it. To use it, I would really go in and eliminate the command manager and get my screen menu area back. To do that, you can right click and you can enable or disable the command manager. And to put menu commands in it that you might not have in it, you can go to a certain area of the menu like the sketch or the features right click and go to customize and find your commands find wherever the command is or go search for it under all toolbars like the ok and drag and drop that command over into the menu but again for the command manager i'm going to say to eliminate it and not use it at all because if you do the other things that i'm going to show you in this video you can get your screen menu area back for working inside your modeling and uh your commands will be right at the tip of your mouse. So to begin with, before I show you how to modify the commands, I want to give you a use case scenario. So I'm just going to go model a simple part and show you how I do it using these shorter methods. So if I want to sketch on something like the front plane, I left mouse button click and I use the left mouse button menu. So from there, I try to stay in the center of the screen. So if I want to sketch a slot, I'll bring up my S key, or I'll use my gesture bar to bring up my S key so I don't even have to reach over and hit the keyboard key. From there, I go in and grab whatever sketch tool I've used, and a lot of those sketch tools are defaulted in your Sketcher shortcut, so you don't even have to put them on there. But I will show you the ones that I put on. So I'm going to go in and just sketch a slot with a couple holes in it. I do want my holes to be the same size, so what I want to do is use the control key and highlight both of my holes. Now I can come over here to hit the equal or add the constraint with my quick pop-up that comes up. Now if I've shaken my mouse and the quick pop-up has gone away, you can either you know, come back down near it and it'll come back or you can hit the control key. And by hitting the control key, it brings the pop-up back up. So if you're getting in the habit of going over here to hit your constraints, stay in the center of the screen and use the pop-up. It's going to save you a lot of mouse movement going from the left to the right. So another command that I like using inside my S key is the fully defined dimension or fully defined sketch command. This automatically dimensions your part for you and it'll put the 2x for everything that was equal like my circles or my arcs. And I love that so I don't have to put extra dimensions on my model showing something else. It's automatically got it on there. If I deleted the hole, the two would go away as well. It doesn't always do a perfect dimensioning job. So the more dimensions it puts on for you automatically, usually the more you're dragging, dropping off and putting into the scheme that you want. I definitely want from the center of the slot and not just half the slot. So real easy way to kind of just go in and model the part using, you know, a couple shortcut menus and leaving it in the center of the screen. So from here, I want to extrude my sketch. So I've gone in in my shortcut key for my sketcher and I've put my extrusion flyouts in there. So I can not only extrude it, but I could revolve it or sweep it or any of the main, you know, additional adding geometry to it is all in this flyout menu. So I'm going to go ahead and click that flyout menu. And then I could key in a value right now by just typing in the key on my keyboard. Or I can go to the 3D, instant 3D, and I can go out to the ruler and drag it. Now, if my increments are set to millimeters, it'll snap to those millimeters if I'm on the ruler. If I come off the ruler, it'll go in whatever fine increments I want. But regardless, 
I could always just key in a value and hit enter as well. So I don't need to move over here to the left screen and do any of this. Matter of fact, the blind, the mid plane, all that stuff is available with the RMB, the right mouse button. So I can go in there and tell it maybe I want this to be mid plane or I want to turn the second direction off. Well, I'll go mid plane on here and it's all changeable. You could right click again and go right back in and change it to blind and get both of your directions back. So you really never have to travel over here and click in this stuff over into here unless you're going into some of the more advanced stuff that you don't see in the menu. Now, I can right click again and I'm going to see my OK come up in the menu, but what about my gesture bar? I also have it programmed in my gestures. So if I just go over to the right, it goes to OK. My left is cancel, my straight down is escape. And I'll show you how I program the gesture bar as well. But that's the main usage of the shortcut key, the left mouse button. Again, if I just left mouse button click, it brings up the shortcut menu right here. If I right mouse button click, it brings up the shortcut menu plus an extended pull down menu in there. It does the same thing if I come over here. If I left click on this, it brings up the shortcut menu. Again, it's dynamic when I'm clicking. Since I'm clicking on a plane, it'll only bring up so much. But if there is something that you really want to modify and put into the left shortcut menu or the right shortcut menu, you just go to Customize, go find the command you want to put in there. Maybe I'd render a lot, so I want to put the rendering in there. And that'll show up the next time you are on that left click in there. Same thing with these. You can go in you want to put something in, like if you're putting in cosmetic threads in your 3D model a lot, you might want them right in this menu. So if you right click and go to customize, if you don't know where the threads are, go to all tools and then you can type in cosmetic or cause for cosmetic threads and drag and drop this icon into that toolbar. You can see I've already done it. I've got my cosmetic threads in there. Ones I like in all my toolbars or on all my shortcuts, I should say, would be my normal to command. That's a good one to put in just about every shortcut with the exception of your drawing shortcut. So you can drag and drop those out into wherever you want. Sometimes they won't appear in certain shortcuts. Again, your normal to wouldn't appear in a drawing shortcut. So you want to make best use of your real estate. So let's go look at what I've got and how we can program these shortcut keys. If I go in and hit the S key, it's gonna show me my part shortcut because I'm in the part mode right now. If I was in the sketcher mode, sketching, then my shortcut key would bring up my sketcher shortcuts. So if we look at what shortcuts I have, let's go in and do it via the right click and customize menu. That is the same is going into the menu up in here and going to customize and going to shortcut bars. So you can do this all at once if you want, or you can do it as you go along. If you just installed SolidWorks, I'd recommend just you know doing it as you go along. You can do it as you're productive using SolidWorks. So if you're watching the video, you might want to just sit back and go ahead and put them all in at the same time. So I like in my shortcut bar, I like the cancel the OK, the normal two, my fully defined sketch. I like mirroring is a command rather than a, a, a what we call the flyout menu. And then I like extrude and cut as a flyout. You can see I've got it a couple times in here. I'm just gonna take it out right now so it's only in there once. But I'll go in and modify this to show you a couple different ways. One, if you're in 2022, you can just go into here and you could type in what command it is that you want and you can hit the plus and it'll go ahead and put that command into the shortcuts. If you're in prior to prior prior to 2022, you'll have to go into customize and do it the older way. And I like the older way because some of the commands still won't show like the OK and cancel. I don't think show up under the new search command in the 2022 shortcuts menu. So I come into the shortcuts here and I go in and I look at what shortcut I want to modify. 
I go to all tools. Here's the OK right here. You can drag and drop that out. Here's the cancel in there. And any of the other ones that you want, the normal two, those are the main three that I would put into your part shortcut menu. I also like the measure in there. That's another real good one to put in if you use it a lot. So I'll go ahead and drop that one in my shortcut bar as well. And you can size your shortcut bar or shape it. So in other words, if I pull it a certain direction, this will go longer or shorter. Let me start from scratch here and just go to customize. And you can see that pulling it can make it go in a different shape. I would say as blocky or square as you can get, lets, them, it lets all your commands be in the center diameter. So shortcut bar, programming it and what to put in it. Really, the S key for parts, I like my normal two, my OK, and my cancel. If I got into doing this through customize, I can show them to you all at once. My assembly mode, same thing, the cancel, the OK, the measure, I like putting in the normal two. I like the interference detection in here, and I like putting the move command in here. Most all these other ones are already in here. I just added the coordinate system for 2022, but before then, it was really just the ones that you see up above there. So the drawing, really, I don't add a whole lot. I like adding the OK. If you use a lot of drawing commands, then go ahead and add more drawing commands to your shortcut. The sketcher shortcut, I think it's really important to put the extrude command in. And again, when I put the extrude and cut command in, it's not like going to the features and just grabbing the extrude command. If I did this, this would just be the extrude command. I like making better utilization of the of the real estate you have in the shortcut key by using flyouts. So if I go to my flyout and I go ahead and I use my extrude flyout, that's what I've done here, or the cut flyout, that's what I've done here. The difference again is when I'm in that particular menu, and I'm using it, you can see I have a pull down that gives me the different commands that are in there for whatever it is that I'm doing. If I had a sketch out right now and I could do something with that sketch, I have the revolve and the sweep command rather than just the sweep command or the extrude. So again, they're, they're flyouts that come with additional commands under them versus if I just went to the other one, you just see that's just the extrude command only. So that's the difference between the flyouts and the non-flyouts in there. Again, I like using the gestures to pull up my flyouts. So how do we program gestures? If I went in and went to customize, here is my gesture bar. And the gestures that I have are the OK. So I've taken this gesture and I've dragged and dropped it here here, here, and here. Prior to like 217, they had a different interface on here and it was more in a column and row form. So I like the OK. Matter of fact, I turn it from four gestures to eight gestures. And to tell you the truth, I rarely use these other gestures. I go in and I use the straight on gestures, the shortcut key. So that's my shortcut key right here, or shortcut bar. I've dragged and dropped that and put it here, 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 and here. My cancel is put on this side, so I've dragged that here, 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 and here. And my escape, this is nice. They started putting the escape key in. And in 2022, I've put this in some of my shortcuts as well. So escape. And again, I've dragged that straight down. So that really eliminates you from having to use the keyboard for just about anything. You will have to have under your, let me go in and enable a couple more things or turn my command manager back on. You will have to have instant 3D turned on in order to use the instant 3D ruler that's out there. So if you don't see the ruler or the little blue balls on your 3D dimensions, you really 
have to go in and put the Instant 3D on in order for that to work. But the RMB, again, you can customize this menu with Customize and going in and dragging and dropping whatever you want on there that you mostly use. So that's really covering the gestures, the left mouse button, the right mouse button, and again, that right mouse button can be used when you're in, you know, editing certain sketches and you want to go in and do the, the blind or the extrusion or the cut. You can go in and do that at the time that you're in the sketcher. So if I'm going to go in and sketch something like a circle, maybe I want to auto dimension this circle. Maybe I want to go ahead and extrude that circle. And then how far I want to extrude it, I can use the ruler or I could automatically key in and again, the right mouse button to bring up the options for that and there. So really easy ways of customizing SolidWorks, taking it out of the box and making it work quicker for you. So you'll have mouse, less mouse travel and less mouse movement. Thanks for watching another video from Go Engineer.